second attempt. So today we, we are looking at sustainable project management, the interface between sustainable development and project management. I point out a few kind of uh, um, differences that make it actually such a challenge and then we have a look at applications yeah, from practice. So this comes largely from the literature. Uh, if you're interested in applications, uh, um, as I mentioned before, I work as well with my colleague Alex Ho as a consultant. Uh, for, for me it's largely research, for him it's consultancy. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, um, we have as well a practical example of how you can start to uh, uh, um, rethink your project management practice. So if you're interested in something like that, I can show you case examples, uh, um, of course neutralized from the companies, but still you can see uh, um, what's possible if you want. Yeah. Okay. So of course it's a very bright idea to do so. This is why we have today the light bulb. Yeah, it's a, um, a strong metaphor. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this doesn't work in agriculture. Uh, do, do you know the metaphor for the light bulb? It's when you have a bright idea, the light goes on. Yeah, Th that's a metaphor, basically. Yeah, not, not very powerful. So the brightness stands for the clarity that you can see. Yeah. So where there was darkness, you can now see. It. Uh, okay. Anyway. Okay, so agenda, uh, first of all, traditional project management. Uh, um, we have a little bit a look at characteristics, then have a quick look at, at uh, sustainable development and in the interface, and then have a look at sustainability in project management before kind of setting out with sustainable project management. Yeah? I introduce you to some typologies, and uh, um, yeah, this is maybe as well something you want to consider for your paper. Oh, before we do so, next week, uh, I have just realized I have suddenly two lectures for next week. Next week is revision week. So uh, we can use the two hours uh, for you to come around with uh, your initial draft or your idea that you have kind of written down on your uh, um, academic paper that you're writing for this module. But the idea for next week is really that you start writing your paper. Yeah, so maybe start with ideas. Uh, um, identify the right literature, start summarizing them, that you have some ideas. And next week is uh, time for you to come around, ask questions, or, or if you want to have uh, um, uh, yeah, feedback on what you have identified, then this is the time. Yeah? We, we can do that in the two hours that we have allocated, but uh, otherwise I'm as well available all week next week. Yeah? So uh, I'll just write an email or pop around to my uh, um, office. This is absolutely fine. Yeah? But ma make sure that you get started with that, that that doesn't become this burdensome big paper at the end of the semester. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Jumping between the uh, topics. So this agenda for today, <coughs> next week, uh, um, tutorials or, or feedback on on your initial draft. Uh, you, you, if you don't want to meet me, just email me. This is well a possibility. Yeah. Okay. So project management. Uh, what what is it? First of all, uh, and you may remember this from the first lecture that we had in Project Program Portfolio Management, it's very difficult to agree on a universal theory of project management. Um, I haven't actually shown you the amazing slide that I have with that. Um, the reality is there is no such thing as one project management theory. So project management has developed as a production theorem for construction, has been kind of uh, been modified by manufacturing for delivering strategic intent next to usual business. Yeah, and that, that is kind of where it started off. And there's a whole emerging literature around different uh, uh, confines of what project management actually tries to do. Yeah. So here I have heroically kind of summarized it into time, quality, and cost. And you, you may remember we had iterations, so we had this way kind of duration or, or expected running time versus quality or scope. Yeah, so they are overlapping elements, and then cost is maybe budget or resources. Yeah, that is as well a common kind of alteration to to use this. Yeah. Um, now, what, what is a project? So uh, a few attempts. We it's really kind of revising what we have done already. An individual or collaborative enterprise planned and de de designed to achieve an aim. Yeah, and uh, um, just to show you how many uh, uh, variations we have there. Uh, the, here from a professional body, yeah, claiming uh, uh, 
one, one way of doing it is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Yeah, so again, this uh, uh, focus of, of uh, outcome. And then we have as well API Mbok, I feel the old version, uh, a unique transient endeavor undertaken to achieve a desired outcome. So it's again, uh, uh, commonalities probably we, we try to do uh, um, something that relates to an organizational goal, right? So I, I know we, we haven't actually written this here, but this is implicit, yeah? So it's relating to somebody's company or, or to a company you may be employed in or, or contracted into, yeah? So this is uh, important to realize. Uh, um, now, when we come, of course, to to what is project management, there is again a multiple definitions. Some are quite task oriented, some are more broad. Yeah. So the application, oh, sorry, uh, um, the application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities to meet the project requirements. So this is PMI again, and then on the other side, APM book, we have the process by which projects are defined, planned, and monitored, controlled and delivered so that agreed benefits are realized. You remember the newer version from APM, delivering stakeholder success, right? So that, that is kind of uh, where they have gone from benefits away. So benefits was already in 2006 the realization that there is something of lasting value from the project, uh, which uh, PMI has to as a uh, um, separate unit, if you want. Yeah. Now, what, what does it come to? So project management, has in its implication a very uh, um, yeah, temporary means it, it's a uh, um, it's a time constraint thing yeah uh, short term uh, is another term for it it's cost focus it's time it's linear it's transient well what is transient it's a strange term right well, what does that mean what do you think transient I'm not pronouncing it very well either but uh, um, what, what does it actually mean? Transient usually means you're changing from one thing to another. Yeah. yeah it is a, it's a, a, a transient test as well, the trans as in transforming. Yeah, so there's an element of change, yeah, uh, um, Im implicit. Um, often there, there's a linearity. It's a deterministic approach. Yeah? You're trying to plan something down so that you can follow it. Yeah? Uh, um, with more adequate project management, you may go beyond that, yeah, but uh, uh, that is the uh, idea. Then it's uh, fact-based, yeah? you, you want to have claims against uh, delivery benchmarks yeah? uh, um, with a scope, yeah? the, there's a narrow next to it, yeah? you, you try to get rid, uh, rid of the other noise. Yeah? You, you try to make it something that can be easy uh, uh, and then simplified in a way so that you can deliver it. But what is IRR? Not to co be confused with IRA. Yeah, this is a completely different thing. IRR. This is already good if you have this. Yeah, it's not that common. It's uh, uh, the internal rate of return. Yeah, this means your company is already thinking. It's not just money that is important. Maybe there's <coughs> something else that we're measuring for. Yeah, so there may be a risk return value for investors and profit of the company. Yeah. And, and then what, what is NPE? Uh, 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 Sorry, this is if you have bad reading skills. So you, you already speak what that. Net present value. Net present value. Yeah, spot on. Net, net present value. Product value is not far off either. <laughs> yeah, so you could probably split it that way. Yeah, but uh, what, so what, what does that mean? Net net present value. What do we evaluate? In this case. Yeah. So we, we, we uh, say when it's half a plane, yeah? Of course, everybody knows half a plane doesn't fly, yeah? So the functionality is completely bad, but uh, uh, it shows you how kind of the value kind of grows uh, against the invested resources. So there's often a proportionality. This is always way to do with your <coughs> costing. Yeah, so this is traditionally was what uh, the commonality of project management is. And then we, we have, of course, uh, um, a little bit more uh, project management is important because projects and project management are crucial activity for organizations uh, or of organizations. Uh, projects are how organizations deliver products, services, and change. And projects are about change. Projects are the business of doing business. Uh, or uh, uh, more heroically summarized recently uh, from a uh, 
uh, a big company owner here locally, uh, they, they saw it as a delivery tool for strategy. Yeah? So if, if your kind of organization is slightly off track, then you're using projects to kind of bring strategy back to the forefront. Yeah? So uh, very important and respectively very well uh, paid and desired in, in the economic market. Um, there, there's the other side, sustainability, uh, sustainable development. And uh, um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, there, there's more to it. So development that meets, uh, meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their own needs. We had that already, yeah, but it's important to remember. Adopting business strategies and activities that meet the needs of the enterprise and its stakeholders today while protecting, sustaining and enhancing the human and natural resources that will be needed in the future. Yeah? So there, there's a huge P in this, of course. And then we had that already, the, uh, uh, the kind of drivers of sustainable development. Uh, there, there's an economy scale, there's an environmental scale, and a society scale. I've gone, of course, against the current here. And so we should have started economy, society, and environment. And they interrelate, of course, and are dependent on each other. And then we have kind of what sustainability is made of. We, we have here the environment, uh, society, yeah? precautionarity. Yeah? So we, we uh, uh, recognition that uh, um, what, what we're interacting with has a fragility to it. Yeah? Long-term life cycle, yeah. So, and, and we are not thinking here of the project life cycle. We are thinking here beyond the product life cycle. We are thinking of the life cycle of people, yeah, societies, which is a, a, a quite quite a difficult one. Now, management-wise, uh, um, there is a well, environment I said already. There's complexity that we recognize. <coughs> it has to do with our planet, people, maybe bottom up. Uh, so, uh, well, what is bottom up? What, what does that mean? It's not a hint that your your trousers are moving, yeah. So it's uh, um, what, what does it mean? Yeah, so only a hierarchy implication, yeah, and bottom up is kind of the people <coughs> on the ground, yeah, that are actually working in the localities and have a different perspective. Yeah? So maybe as a project manager, you are too remote from the locality to recognize certain elements, yeah? then this is very strong to encourage actually the bottom-up approach or feedback or, or involvement. Yeah? Then we have as well uh, systemic. Yeah? So there's a recognition that there's a knock-on effect. So we can't just fragment it and challenge it. So it has as well kind of uh, um, implication for the uh, other parts, if you want. Yeah? So it, it's an interrelationship, a causality. Then life cycle, it, it has to do as well with uh, generational. Yeah? So, uh, um, and uh, yeah, it's a moment uh, for your generation where we are playing at the moment with the digitalization of the world. And we are playing as well at the moment with biogenetics. Yeah? So uh, there's another wonderful game coming. Uh, exciting for me, yeah, as, uh, as being at the university, because it's a big game changer. But it, it means as well that we are again on uh, uncharted territory. Yeah? Uh, um, and it has to do with the future. And, oh, TBL, what is that? Not a disease. TBL, what could that be? Is that triple bottom line? Yes. What, what was that? Triple bottom line? I can't remember what it is. But Oh, this is so good. Uh, <laughs> so, so TDL stands for triple bottom line. Yeah. It's kind of what companies have agreed to kind of sign up to as a minimum if they have corporate social responsibility. And it stands literally for this economy, environment, and society. Sustainability, basically. Yeah. So sometimes it's as well people, planet, and I forgot one P. The planet and another P. Yeah, okay, it comes later. <laughs> we read it already in the concepts. Okay, so sustainability is, of course, important. The choice we make today affects the future. Uh, maintaining ecosystem services without which we cannot survive. Creating a more equitable and uh, uh, just society. And, of course, sustaining as well human development. Yeah. Uh, um, but what is sustaining human development? Is that some creepy like uh, laboratory thing where we kind of 
uh, uh, build Nietzsche superhuman or something like that? Is, is that what it is? Some, some people smile, so they, they, are, they are suspicious of this description. Yeah? So you, you doubt that this is the case. Yeah? What, what is this uh, meaning, sustainable human development? Yeah? So on, on what basis? Uh, uh well, on the basis of a project, it's like, um, on the basis of a project, it's basically when you do a project, it's never finite. There's always room for improvement, and this is a pending the human resource that you have. So the project gives the human resource around them the ability to keep improving in regards to the project, or if it's a business, in regards to the business. Or so it could be, from an HR point of view, it could be in the form of training and development. It could, it could, it literally could be anything. But it's just about developing the human resource that you have. Yeah. So you you had already a look at the human development, yeah, combined with sustainability. Uh, sustaining human development has as well the aspiration of equal access to equal opportunities. <coughs> yeah. This means no matter where you are, you, you can, well, it's, it's a hidden uh, uh, idea that is communicated a lot in the media. Yeah? So no matter where you come from, where you have been, uh, um, you can be who you want and uh, uh, when you want, something like that. Yeah? So the, the idea is that there's a quality planet uh, resource uh, um, implication to training, education, and uh, um, as well health, yeah, to health systems. Then last one, uh, creating a more equitable uh, um, and just society, so there is a little bit overlap, but uh, this is what sustainability is for. So let, let's have a look how that actually intersects. Uh, um, so we have here project management and sustainable development, and this is of course interesting. So on one side we have uh, short-term oriented sponsors, uh, narrow stakeholders, deliverable results oriented, scope time budget, then reduced complexity, you know, so it's a kind of plan, then top-down decision making, maybe. Yeah? Uh, we have more approaches here, you, you hopefully remember that from project program and portfolio management. But uh, um, sim simplified, this is like dominant traits. Then very fact-based, Linear mathematical analysis, even yeah, we, we have uh, um, performance analysis. If you play around with gun charts and you're measuring uh, um, like performance in a critical pass analysis or something like that, or you, you play around with NPV or IRR, then you, you will <coughs> arrive at a very hard tools, right, that you're evaluating. And then on the sustainability, it, it's nearly, it nearly looks like opposite, opposites, right? So there's short-term orientation, then there's long-term orientation on sustainability. So how, how are we supposed to include this? Yeah? Then we have uh, current and future generations. Yeah? We, we are supposed to consider those. And we find it already difficult to kind of consider our stakeholders yeah, that we can identify and are here at the moment. Yeah? And then you have the deliverables, result orientation versus the life cycle orientation. Oh, there, there, the profit, I forgot the profit in the three Ps. Triple bottom line. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, and then on sustainability, you have the people, planet, and profit, right? That is important. So is that the same here? I'm not sure. Uh, increasing complexity, so being open to new insights and being uh, um, kind of outward looking, right? This is what we are doing, sustainable development. And here kind of reduced complexity. And then here, consensus, bottom up. And then on the other side, potentially top down decision making. And here, fact based, they're precautionary. So even if you have like hints or, or assumptions, you may want to uh, um, yeah, be careful about it. Systematic approach, just, uh, um, so relating to ecosystems, but as well to uh, um, social systems. And here, kind of linear. So. Mathematical is always compromising, right, uh, uh, to a degree, for for the uh, um, yeah, uh, in quantification, you, you can't get around it. Yeah? And then here, we have again a triple bottom line, so it, it's uh, kind of a double, but the sustainability of all. Yeah. So this is tricky, right? So what 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 are we going to do about this? Well, uh, the the quick answer is, uh, um, and this comes from practice, so fused from the field. 
um, many people actually think uh, uh, that that is our kind of goal as project managers. We we are the people in the place. So project management needs to consider environmental social constraints as part of planning process and identify risk, challenges, opportunities to the company before the project is actually launched. So it's an upfront level. And this came from the uh, um, ex-president and uh, uh, now CEO, uh, no, actually former CEO now, of the Project Management Institute. So if, if even the, they believe it, then this is a good sign. That is Mary McKinley, our, uh, um, she's as well our external examiner. She's a adjunct professor of project management, but actually as well the president of the International Project Management Association. So if you're in any of the, uh, I know some of the Swedish students, I think, are in the young crew. Is that true? Young crew of project management? No? Okay, maybe not. So uh, um, there's International Project Management Association and the <coughs> Swedish chapter. And I have definitely seen. Hmm, okay, so the uh, just to to preempt uh, results, I'm as well on the British chapter basically. But uh, um, last year, uh, um, I, I saw a lot of uh, former Sharma students coming to the congress. But uh, m maybe this is in my mind. I, I assumed that there were some of you as well. But okay, never mind. But she she is basically the president of the European chapter. So, uh, and uh, even she thinks the future development of the project management profession requires project managers to take responsibility for sustainability. So, and uh, um, yeah, she, she comes from, uh, I shouldn't really give too much out, but she has largely worked in uh, um, heavy industry and defense sector. Yeah, so it's, uh, um, if, if that insight comes from that side, then we have really kind of missed something if we are not uh, believing in that. Yeah. And of course, there's uh, um, kind of the Academy of uh, um, Sustainable Communities, Minds the Skills Gap report. We, we had this well uh, recently kind of the signed up goal, right? This is two weeks ago that we actually have an agreement that we want to reduce temperatures and respond to kind of uh, um, sustainability uh, um, challenges. So here deliver a sustainable delivery of sustainable communities will depend on embedding principles and understanding in the approach to project management and amongst project management professionals. So they're actually targeting us and say, you are the right guys. Yeah. Oh yeah, and last but not least, uh, it, it's Taylor himself. He, he was a former president. Uh, this is not true. He, uh, oh no, yeah, he was. Uh, uh, he was actually president 2006 to 2008, I think. That is, project managers are ideally placed to make contributions to sustainable practices. So there, there must be something in it, yeah? This is the point. So how can we look at sustainability and project management? Well, uh, um, there, there is a book to it, of course. Yeah, it's as well on my reading list, so you have it as well in the library. Uh, um, so current research is still quite patchy. So we have now a special issue coming. Uh, that, that you kind of got the draft for. Yeah, you write the same paper as academics have. So I have written one article too. So you can read that in March. Yeah, so it's sadly afterwards, but you can compare, right? We can look at our journal, all our articles, versus the journal that will be published. So this is pretty amazing. So cur current research, uh, um, just notice, it's a swear industry driven, actually quite heavily. Yeah? So versus uh, academia, I say uh, patchy, so the bigger ones are probably Silvius and Chipper. Uh, I've put this, of course, Hope and Luna there too, but uh, uh, we have only three papers so far, so we are working on it. Yeah, uh, um, but the aim here really is to kind of combine uh, uh, both from a kind of conceptually grounded uh, approach, but as well from a practical and uh, um, case-based and benchmarking approach, uh, um, uh, integration of sustainability into principles for project management. And this is not so much principles by which you have to live by, but a toolkit, you know, how you can assess better your projects. Yeah, and uh, hopefully leading to an evolution of the profession. And by, by the conversations that we had in the seminars, some of you are already very aware, whereas uh, uh, some, some others here from industry as well quite skeptical about it, yeah? Okay, so what, what is sustainable project management actually? So uh, um, a sustainable project uh, is really the combination now from sustainability with the project management definitions. 
an endeavor undertaken to achieve a desired transient outcome whilst protecting, sustaining, and enhancing the human and natural resources required for future generations to meet their needs. Now, this can be quite tricky. So uh, um, let's have a look at examples. Yeah, so sustainable project costs is one such example. Actually, uh, um, the next session we have actually on the initiation. I, I give you a whole raft of tools uh, um, that, that we can have a look at. Yeah? So here you have the initial investment so, uh, um, of 100,000 uh, um, with a pay, payback period. So it's as well a question of how quick do you want to have the return on your investment. Yeah, this is always an interesting one. Generally, the trend is nobody wants to wait long anymore. Yeah? So the quicker, the better. So this creates as well then a, a certain problem. Uh, um, return on investment is potentially 780,000 in this example. So sustainable project management focuses on continually improving the environmental su and sustainability of the resources assumed on a project. The cost of incorporating sustainable thinking into projects mirror the cost of incorporating quality, prevention costs, appraisal costs, and failure costs. So this is at least uh, um, uh, one very strong claim from this paper. There are costs uh, associated with reviews and monitoring of sustainability within the project. So be aware, yeah, this is additional. You have to actually have it in the project. But if you price it as part of the uh, life costs, then it's very good. It's not always easy to do, though. Yeah. Uh, um, this includes data analysis collection to help evaluate both the product of the project and the management of the project itself. Yeah, so this has maybe as well implications. If you do your project normally just in the factory and you're now trying to do a product really bespoke for a certain location with like an audience, uh, um, local people, yeah, then this may mean you have to uh, um, put in new mechanisms, right? Go there and figure out uh, um, what they're expecting and what, what they actually evaluate as well, right? So this is additional processes that come into the project plan and into the uh, um, project itself. Yeah. And there are the cost of failure, which is the reason for investing in sustainability measures in the first place. Some of these costs are difficult to quantify. However, in most cases, the cost of what would have been failures, both internal, such as recycling, reuse, rework, and external losses, sh such as loss of credibility, warranty, will far outweigh the prevention and appraisal cost, and therefore will be in addition to the bottom line. So you are as well raising the game. Do you have any examples where, where you can think of projects that, that run against the wall, where you know that it really hurts the reputation? External drivers, like famous projects? So I'm, I'm thinking here of the big ones uh, that oh, were in the news. Um, <coughs> RBS divestments, that was going to be sold to they were going to sell part of the bank to Santander and then they pulled out. Yeah, so this is a Royal Bank of Scotland? Yeah. And so what, what went wrong? Um, the main buyer pulled out and then the overspend of the project or program was, I don't know, into the billions and then they couldn't find another buyer. Okay, actually I, I have missed that. This is a pity. So, and then what was the background of this? So, Santander um, was uh, interested in buying a unit from Royal Bank of no, Scotland? The, the reason for it happening was because the um, European Union, um, as part of the bank bailout, mm -hmm. this was one of the conditions for um, RBS to be scaled down. So, then they had to basically kind of um, carve out part of the bank mm -hmm. and then repackage it as another bank to sell on. Okay. And it's still going on. And they passed the deadline like about four years ago. And yeah. But yeah, under kind of European law, they've got to sell it on. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's just costing loads of money. Mm. So this is uh, relating then to the bank crash, yeah? And, and actually, so Royal Bank of Scotland doesn't seem to work that uh, well. But it was the same uh, here. We had Lloyd's TSB, which is now Lloyd's and TSB. Yeah, so there, there were quite a few banks that actually divided. And I think uh, it was, there were more banks, right? This was it by Halifax. Uh. Yeah. So those were banks that were nationalized and then uh, um, actually separated between, uh, um, well, the size really mattered. So they had to kind of show that they would uh, um, separate the group into different banks. 
So as well, Northern Rock was one of the banks, a local bank here, which is now uh, pretty much half owned by Virgin. So Virgin saw that as an opportunity to get into banking. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> And that went, uh, uh, so what, what, but this sounds more in terms of uh, profitability or? Um, well, I think the Lloyds and the Northern Rock um, sort of turnarounds, they went okay, but the RBS forum really didn't, and it's still ongoing. Okay. So it's a bit of a major <coughs> embarrassment. Yeah, so it was probably packaged in a way that uh, probably the party that was buying it wasn't quite satisfied with it, yeah? So there, there were a lot of conditions and hooks uh, uh, that looked scary probably for the buyer. Yeah? Okay, but uh, um, th this is one example. Yeah, very good. Uh, um, other examples, like maybe that, that uh, uh, became famous. So I'm thinking here of external losses, you know, where the project actually looked all right, but then it went wrong. Mm -hmm. The Samsung notes. The Samsung, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, which one? The Samsung? Samsung yes. Note 7. Note 7. Oh, what, what went wrong with the Samsung 7? Well, it keeps exploding in people's pockets. So, do you know why and how? <coughs> well, well, they pulled all production of it, so uh, they don't know either. Yeah, no, so they, they've stopped production and it's been cancelled altogether and it just got launched last month. Yeah. So, the phone is not even a month old and it's cracked. So it's yeah, they okay. released it initially, then people started saying it's blowing up. They then got them to send those phones back and gave them a replacement phone. The and then when the replacement thing. phones did the same thing, um, they stopped all production it and now US Airlines will refuse to take any of these phones on their planes in case they blow up and catch fire. Is that okay. the waterproof one? Yeah, it's the waterproof one, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's the uh, Samsung uh, 7 Note, right? Note yeah. 7. Note 7. Yeah. It's not even available in the UK yet, it was only available in the States at that point. Okay. Well, they so stopped production and they're recalling it back, so that's <laughs> never to send back the Note 7. Yeah. That's it. It would be interesting. So, if, uh, um, normally, if it blows up, this means it's where that uh, uh, um, have materials that can blow up. So, uh, it's the um, batteries are getting too hot. They reckon that the power of the computer inside the phone is too powerful for the battery. So, the battery gets too hot and eventually it catches fire. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, okay, so maybe something, yeah, again, this was again probably a time pressure as well with design, yeah, so... We were trying to get it out before the iPhone 7 came out. Yeah. yeah there you go. Which good, they did. good case. They did, but uh, yeah. it didn't last long. <laughs> now Google has as well a new one that's, uh, that's a nightmare for mobile uh, producers. <coughs> but you, you see here, so here it's actually reputation loss. And it depends really if clients want to stay then with them, particularly if the competition has as well kind of similar uh, level products that may compete actually. Yeah? Okay, so that, that was a, a very good example. Another one maybe? Are, are you aware of any internal ones uh, um, where you have seen internal uh, losses or, or failure? So if you come across any projects where it came to the point where you actually had to uh, uh, do a lot of rework or, or uh, um, you know, the materials that you ordered, you had not uh, um, done it properly or, or like used another material and then uh, you had to rip it out and uh, redo it. Yeah, I've looked at examples, but uh, I think already of, of concrete ones. So uh, any examples there? When that comes to mind, but the thing is that they just they just end up doing the wrong they just end up not doing the wrong thing is uh, when it comes to car manufacturers, they find out they made a mistake. Uh, instead of just recording and replacing the faulty material, mm -hmm. they end up just selling the products like that and then dealing with lots lots of later. So at the end of the day they well usually what the what the CEOs claim is that it's much more cheaper to just compensates people, even though sometimes people die, they feel, it, they feel it's much more cheaper to compensate people than recalling faulty products. Yeah. The dying is no longer an option there, yeah, but uh, um, it, it was oh, in the past, there's a famous oh, study from Ford. Ford. Ford still did it. No, was it Ford? No, Boxley Jane still did it very recently, so it's kind of still an option. Okay, I didn't yeah, realize. Ford was, Ford was the original case study. 
But recently, as recent as last year, Volkswagen had a similar problem with faulty, faulty cars, and everyone is saying they knew before they released those cars, and they're trying to say, oh, we didn't know, blah, blah, blah. It was kind of a big scandal for the last year. Yeah, it's built well in carbon emissions, Clay. Um, yeah. They said they were better than they were. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that, that was uh, so the uh, I knew about the uh, uh, performance. Yeah, the I didn't know uh, the the forty cars that uh, kind of uh, uh, brought um, people. This was just last year. It's just it's very recent. Okay. Yeah. This this can be even loss of license uh, nowadays. Uh, some countries have actually enforced it's it. it. It's so it's, it's quite interesting. Yeah. But it's a question with uh, companies like Volvo or as well the banks. You know, there, there's a there seems to be a size implication. <coughs> So some organizations have become so big that actually countries or national systems cannot actually fail them because they are so system relevant. And that is, of course, uh, very concerning. Uh, this, uh, um, this shouldn't be the case uh, from a moral point. Uh, um, OK, yeah, so I, I, I will I'll give you a few examples. So rework, uh, um, particularly here, local construction. I mentioned that in the lecture already. If I don't pay attention, uh, although I buy the insulation material, my uh, local craftsmen uh, um, have different teams working on different houses, insulating. They, they really like their own material. If they have learned how to use one material and you try to kind of train them, uh, they, they had a formal training from a, a company to actually how to use it, they still don't like it. So they, uh, as soon as you don't look, if they have the chance to hide something, I had it, it's a bad example, but... Uh, um, Basically, I, I look behind it and they have to do the rework, and uh, yeah, I, I don't know why this is actually uh, still happening. But there, there's a temptation with things like that, and then as well, uh, um, yeah, we, we can pick as well uh, um, classical examples from play. Are you fine? So may, maybe don't listen with your kind of uh, um, air, uh, tourist uh, ear to this, but as well with planes, there uh, are famous examples where uh, with value engineering materials have been brought to such a close level that they nearly had the uh, failure frequency and they hadn't <coughs> considered all the scenarios. So there were some that uh, um, the Boeing 777 actually hit, and uh, um, this is not just them, Airbus has just a, a different framework of testing. So they actually found it out on their cargo plane, so it didn't become big media, but this is as well where they actually had to kind of uh, reuse their old system uh, just to be able to deliver the uh, products in time. Uh, so sometimes uh, um, there are certain dangers if you're just looking at the costing and not the sustainability or durability side, particularly in engineering. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, um, there is as well an implication uh, next to costing to the life cycle. So the project like life cycle is uh, kind of uh, something like that. So you have the initiation or, or the, the actual uh, um, idea of your project, then a concept, then the definition, maybe mobilization of resources, planning, or whatever your, your approach there may be, and then the implementation and closure. Now this is very bad. So if your uh, project team kind of uh, um, runs off at that point and liabilities are respective short on, on uh, um, yeah, any format of uh, the work that you have done, then of course there's a cutoff. Whilst here the uh, new process already in our uh, professional bodies is focusing on legacy tool or, or the lifetime of the product or service. So a life cycle of a project typically begins with a project initiation and travels through the project closure and beyond. Applying sustainability to the life cycle thinking is essential as during every stage of a project, the environment and social and economic impacts are different. Um, what, what could I mean by that? Uh, um, there, there are like different impacts at different stages. What, what does that mean for a life cycle? Did you see the extremes maybe? So what, what is the impact actually in the initiation or concept time on the environment or the social? If, if you have a project, yeah, we, we want to uh, build me a wonderful bike yeah, for cycling across the hills here. But when we plan, is there an implication on my health or well-being? Or, or maybe environment? 
Well, what do you think? That, uh, do I, do, have I spoken too cryptic? Uh, um, so in other words, uh, um, here, initiation and concept and definition, we haven't yet touched anything, right? We, we haven't really uh, polluted anything. We, we have no environmental footprint. Yeah. It's just us uh, exchanging hot air. Yeah, unless we are traveling to exotic places, yeah, uh, exotic to here, yeah, so uh, far, far away, yeah, then uh, or wherever you are, yeah, you, you travel somewhere, then okay, you may have an impact. Uh, um, so socially, we, we, we may have already impact, yeah, so I may like my bike more or less, depending on what you're describing. Yeah? But um, this is very minimal. Uh, uh, maybe my other friends around me uh, uh, will as well be impacted. Maybe my family, and if the bike is too big and I want to hang it in the living room, this, this is a very uh, best conflict. Yeah? Then economically, yeah, economically, this is what we are talking about. Yeah? Economically, we have already uh, impact. Yeah? We, we may see ordering time. There's a cost implication with what we are picking. Yeah, so this is already very visible. Yeah. But of course, we, we are defining here as well kind of the social and the environmental impact, right? <coughs> so this is actually implicit as well discussed here. So we, we actually as well look at what, what will actually happen. That is when we come to the mobilization and implementation, this is when we hit the uh, initial steps but then it's as well very difficult to change it, right? There's an impact, respectively. Yeah. Now, the, there are many ways to portray the project lifecycle. However, the APM generic project lifecycle covers six stages, so hence uh, this one. And then, uh, um, yeah, now, now we have as well a legacy kind of uh, argument in the project management, but again, it depends which approach you're using. Yeah? So, and uh, it's not necessarily a widely uh, um, distributed one. So, however, there's a, a one extra stage of the cycle that affects the sustainability of the project, the long-term effects uh, um, beyond traditional project life cycle thinking, and certainly past the date of uh, which the project is closed and handed over. This may be termed the legacy of the stage. Uh, um, nowadays, the, the recommendation is really to look partly as well at the product life cycle, right? This is the use, the operations, maybe maintenance, yeah, extension or change of the life, and then as well the uh, grave. Yeah? So what, what parts do you actually have and what can they be used in the future <coughs> for? Yeah? That this should be as well be planned for. We don't do this a lot. Yeah? So if you combine it, project uh, um, cycle, well, project life cycle with sustainability, uh, um, the, this is one attempt. This is uh, um, actually looking at the interface. So the uh, um, <coughs> so you have basically the project ideation, then the planning phase. Oh, I've jumped here with a, a sorry, yeah, a, a different life cycle if you want. Then the manufacturing phase, depending on the industry that you're in. Then the deployment phase. And from the deployment phase, you don't just go to project closure, but you basically jump uh, into product purchase, product usage, project disposal, and the legacy. So it's kind of a continuation. But the project may close out, but liabilities are basically uh, kept, yeah, and this this is quite important. So here, the project uh, um, cycle of sustainability can be defined as a complete cycle of a project, which includes not only the project life cycle but also the product and service life cycle. So beyond the defined parameters of a traditional project, in this model of sustainable project management, the true end of project is a point where the project no longer exists in any form, yeah, or your footprint has been kind of carried on. Yeah, so this is quite heavy, of course, but uh, um, this is what you are aiming at. So uh, um, sustainable project management di dictates that the project life cycle and crucially the product's legacy phase is planned for at each stage in the project life cycle. Only then can the project be termed truly sustainable. Yeah, um, yeah it's a big question. Do we do, uh, uh, has, has anybody worked on a project like this? where you kind of considered rebuilding. And in some industries, it's very popular. So uh, um, aerospace here locally as well, 
uh, with planes, uh, we, we actually do that. And the guys that kind of came up with this, uh, um, this actually a uh, slightly odd story, it's the Soviet Union. They, they were very uh, kind of worried that uh, um, if a crafty engineer would get hold of their wonderful uh, um, planes, that they could re-engineer it. And this is true. Uh, if, if you have studied engineering, if you can take it apart and have a look at what's inside, what the system parts are and, and how they function, then it's very likely to rebuild it. So they actually, out of a worry that any part of their plane could be potentially used to copy their advanced technology, they actually plant even kind of the grave. So they, they built a lot of the parts in uh, Czech Republic, Romania, and parts like north of uh, what's now Ukraine. And then uh, they had a separate location and factory that would take it apart, melt it back in, and uh, uh, take the different parts uh, uh, into its essentials and mix it with normal uh, products. Yeah? So this is quite interesting. So that, that was actually a uh, um, quite impressive case study. Uh, th this is actually a paper, uh, paper that I, I think have as well in the reading. I have to make sure that I touch it uh, uh, as well to the folder, but uh, it's in the list. So sometimes sustainability can be motivated by other things. I guess that was the bottom line. Then the, you, you have the environmental scope as well. So this is understanding and controlling the scope of the project core of project management, so project managers which do this well are amongst the most successful in the industry. So we see that already in many industries, uh, um, actually construction in the last 10 years has really shifted. Yeah? So nearly all sites have a waste management plan and get rewarded for uh, um, saving resources. Yeah, this is just one, but uh, um, yeah, with, with this, uh, we have seen a really big shift as well uh, in other industries already. So uh, uh, any company that is kind of aiming at lean yeah, automotive or, or as well uh, um, yeah, production lines for pharmacy products or, or hair products, perfumes uh, uh, that we still had recently here, uh, um, then uh, they, they are all trimmed basically on that. So the environmental scope here of a project relates to the life cycle thinking. It is important for the project team to view the project through an environmental lens and utilize life cycle thinking, considering the project itself and its processes, in particular the resources it consumes and the product of the project in operation. Now, a word of warning, uh, um, if you haven't done that as a team, get some expertise, get, get some uh, people involved <coughs> that can help you to identify this. Yeah, we, we have done in my university here as well an exercise like that. And uh, we were lucky enough, we had actually our envi environmental guys sitting in, but uh, they, they were a group by themselves, and it was hilarious because it was a facilitation. We came up with all our options, and ours were very social oriented. And then my team and uh, um, another environmental team, we, we had actually proper environmental criteria to make sure that people can familiarize as well up front. And uh, otherwise, it looks very different depending on who is involved there. Yeah. Uh, project man managers must expand their view to what happens after the project closure to the time uh, that the product is disposed of and many of the considerations from this stage which may be way in the future can make their way back into the present and affect the project scope now. Yeah, so, uh, um, so I mean, if you want to be critical about it, uh, currently in Japan, yeah, they, they are thinking about, uh, close, well, not thinking, uh, they are closing a lot of the nuclear plants and uh, try to innovate a way as well out of uh, certain energy capacities. And uh, um, yeah, so there you can see as well that the design of nuclear is kind of viewed as like something that future generations have to deal with where we don't have solutions yet. And this is a big worry for them. So some societies have decided to go that way. Here, here we have committed to research, yeah, so uh, it's the uh, other way. So you can do that, of course, as well. Yeah, so there's a belief uh, uh, in the sustainability that we will actually generate technologies being able to cope with that. Yeah, but that is at the moment just a way to do so, not, not much more. Yeah? Uh, but I'm, I'm sure we will get there at some point. So we have actually, uh, um, at least in the uh, um, research side, groundbreaking theorems. Yeah? Um, so yeah, here I gave the wind farm example, but uh, considerations such as, uh, uh, yeah, decommissioning and uh, um, looking what happens with the different parts may actually change the envelope. Uh, um, so the wind farm example that I'm alluding here to is a, a famous one with Siemens. 
I kind of put the, uh, um, the Siemens sensors were normal turbines, so they kind of looked at the engines and just modified it for wind uh, turbines. And uh, um, they, they used normal plugs, and I don't know if I've told you this, so they kind of used plugs for onshore wind farms, which is absolutely fine. They kind of blast, uh, uh, um, they go off if it generates too much energy for a long time. So if you have a hurricane and kind of the stopping engine kind of fails, then it overheats and the system, uh, the plug goes. It's not a problem. Somebody, uh, when the storm is over, jumps into the van, drives there, climbs up the ladder, puts a new plug in, yeah, and all, all is working fine again. Now they use the same for the wind offshore parks, which is kind of 100 kilometers offshore. Now that makes a kind of jumping into the van and climbing up all these different wind uh, turbines quite hard. This meant it was a helicopter, right? And you have to fly around. And again, the plug flew out. So in the end, for the next wind park, they, they resort basically the design of the plug. The plug was 20 pounds. Uh, the more expensive one that has a safety in it is something like 100 pounds. This was just not considering the uh, uh, life cycle. Yeah. OK. There's an environmental risk as well. So uh, there's compliance, risk management, and then kind of business and sustainability, and it impacts on economic performance and environmental performance. So that's a linear relationship. Um, do, do you remember that case? Do you know what happens there? Or what is this? Interpretation of my photo? Deep water horizon. Yes. Oh, wow. This is very important. Yes, uh, they run it, but under which umbrella? Did you know the company that commissioned it? Really? Yeah. But it was actually Halliburton Joe, company. Yeah, yeah. So they, they are, of course, uh, contractors that would do it. Yeah, you spot on. So, uh, um, so this was actually a massive threat and uh, really led to BP being, first of all, highly fined, not perceived to be a, a company that is. Uh, um, so the oil and gas industry had already a little bit. Uh, um, Patchy reputation, to say the least. Yeah, uh, um, but uh, um, BP was even branded as a as one of the worst companies in that selection, yeah. and that is of course very bad for for kind of future business if you are trying to expand. Have you seen this advertisement on the internet, circling around like BP logo and bad vehicle, or oh. bad planning, big problems? OK, OK. <laughs> so the, you, you see what happens. Yeah? So reputation goes down. And uh, um, in, in this case, probably just as comedy. Yeah, but uh, this has as well real-term impact, really, on, on your uh, interface with investors or, or your future projects. Yeah, but uh, very, very good. Yeah. Uh, so risk can be defined as both threats and opportunities. So negative risks are categorized as threats, while positive risks are opportunities. Yeah, and with this in mind, project manager can as well recognize that many of the environmental aspects and their impacts on the project are really project risks, both threats and opportunities. Uh, did, did you have already a, a look with either Claudio or Dave at uh, risk management? Yeah. So you, you had the basics and categorizing. Yeah. So there is as well a quantitative level that if your risk and your project actually become so risky that it's a danger to the company, any company have uh, actually distanced himself or, or kind of made sure that it's a separate unit. Yeah. Google was uh, bullied into this uh, recently, uh, last year. The government actually bullied them because they were in fear that Google is too big. Yeah. And uh, there was as well a system implication for the information network that uh, uh, America is using. And actually, so are we, but uh, uh, yeah, different game there. So in the initial uh, um, phase of the journey, the need uh, to comply with an environmental regulation drives improvements in the environmental performance. But of course, as the project managers uh, can adopt more proactive approach in the next phase, so environmental risk management is introduced to reduce environmental liabilities and to minimize the costs or regular, regulatory compliances. So there's a direct opportunity if you're doing better, if you're embracing a system where you show that you are reusing all your resources and that you are very thoughtful, then as well uh, regulations like waste management are obsolete, right? So there's a win-win situation if you can embrace a system like that. But uh, again, this is uh, depending on initial, this is upfront costs if you want, yeah? So you, you have to put it in place. <coughs> 
a substantial number of uh, companies recognize that the implementation of sustainable project strategies can lead to new opportunities and improved results. The business and uh, um, sustainable development phase is like kind of the place where you want to host those, right? Um, the impact of poor risk management, while well, this was an example with BP, and we heard that uh, in the internet it went uh, even much further. Yeah, so bad people. And this is quite bad, right? If you're an employee, this is not what you want to get. It's, it's, uh, it makes you feel probably quite anxious. Yeah. Now, the other dimension is stakeholder management. We had that already. So, uh, um, yeah, spot here, uh, the, the categories are slightly different uh, um, from some of the models that I uh, have introduced to you. So, when considering the project through an environmental lens, a sustainable project has a much wider list of project stakeholders than perhaps a traditional project does. Uh, this is not really uh, surprising. I, I gave you the wonderful example of the Berlin Airport, where we have now this uh, uh, bridge for bats. And so they kind of crawl over it, it's uh, um, their thing. I, I don't really know why. No, I, I do know why, but uh, um, so uh, in Berlin, we had an um, airport expansion. So Berlin doesn't have a major airport, just small ones, but multiple. And uh, um, so the, the aim was to have as well another big airport in, in uh, uh, Europe. So uh, Berlin actually went on that venture. And uh, they still haven't completed. But uh, one of the things why the whole uh, um, construction actually came to a halt was a demonstration of uh, people that were very much uh, um, focused on their local forest, uh, uh, an uh, activist group that uh, kind of lobbied for the ecosystems that were in the forest. And it's a very rare species of bats that uh, um, uh, is basically migrating there to reproduce. And they have a very bad behavior. They kind of make a sound and kind of crawl along kind of the uh, um, top of the trees. But what that has as a consequence is if the plants land over that, they don't hear basically their mates and then don't find each other. So there was a fear of distinction and they, they had even a good case that that has already happened somewhere else. So uh, in, in a nutshell, uh, the, the whole project came to hold and then they negotiated with the group. So initially, they just tried to ignore it, didn't work, they were very active. And uh, um, in the end, uh, the activists kind of uh, um, collected money and built their own bridge. And that, that was the solution. There, there was no cost for the project. Yeah. So sometimes see it as a resource. Uh, um, if they would have listened earlier and not just tried to neglect uh, what they said or, or ignore them, uh, then they, they would have had a lot better reputation and uh, wouldn't have had to hold off for one year. Yeah. But uh, this is another story that probably nobody wants to talk about in this project. Yeah? There, there are many more projects like that where, where you see that stakeholder uh, engagement is so essential. Yeah. So, uh, um, yeah, uh, and, and be aware, even the professional bodies have now changed to definitions that uh, um, uh, stakeholders is everybody that uh, or anyone who is affected in any way by a project. Yeah, so this is... Uh, um, this means as well, in theory, future generations. Yeah. Now, uh, when we come to types of sustainable projects, uh, um, this is one of the attempts uh, um, done by colleagues. Oh, my case studies. <coughs> I have forgotten the name of, OK, never mind. So um, there's green by definition. And controversially, in the article, they used wind farms. But the idea, what, what, what what could that be? Green by definition? What do you think? A project green by definition. What, what does that mean? So first of all, we have green by definition, then green by project impact, then green by product impact, and green in general. I, I can first read through it if you want. All projects have some element of sustainability. However, they differ in the amount and type of sustainability or environmental aspects they contain and how those aspects uh, manifest themselves. It is important to ensure that the project is successful, but we must also ensure that the product is successful. This means considering the impact of the product following the end of the project or handover. This is the use of the project in a steady state. In order to understand how to manage sustainability in a project, the project manager must understand the types of project that must be managed in terms of their sustainability. So here are the four types. 
green by definition, green by project impact, green by product impact, and green in general. So I, I want examples. We, we have some below. So this looks like, uh, what, what is that? It's foggy. It's on the ocean. It's like a wind farm. It's yeah. Wind. It's a offshore wind farm. You're yeah. spot on, yeah? Okay. Why, why is that green by definition? What, what does that mean? I mean, I've given you the paper, so it's actually written down, but I, I want to get a feeling for the, for the typology. What, what is green by definition? So what could be a project that is green by definition? Renewables or something that's having a positive impact? Yeah, this is the next one, kind of, right? But yeah. you're, you're spot on. Uh, um, so in, in a way, here the argument is made, at least in this paper, that the uh, wind farm is by definition, because it's a renewable energy, it, it should be uh, green by definition. I, I have issue with that. Yeah? So there's a debate ground. I, I would say this is actually green by project impact. <coughs> You're having here renewable energy. The, the carbon blades are not as sustainable. Yeah? This is not uh, um, something that you just fold together out of uh, uh, tree leaves falling off, yeah? which I would more consider. So, uh, but uh, again, this is like being picky. Yeah? But uh, green by definition is literally, the, uh, for example, a change project in the university to be more sustainable. Yeah, although you may make a lot of un unsustainable elements, it's an attempt to kind of uh, do sustainable things with your project by definition. Yeah. So it's maybe the aim of your project. Yeah, does that make sense? Okay, can we have another example, maybe? Yeah, green by definition. Yeah. So uh, yeah, okay. So uh, renewable. Yeah. So uh, um, you have a project where you put uh, um, solar panels on your roof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. So again, the, there's again the potential uh, uh, match. But again, yeah, if the intent is to make it more uh, uh, energy efficient in terms of being more sustainable, then you're spot on. Yeah? Other examples, maybe. Green by definition, so any waste minimizations, uh, effluent uh, uh, um, procedures that you put in place, yeah, or, or uh, um, recycling processes. Do I have recycling? Yeah. So uh, um, this would go into green by definition. Yeah. It could be as well uh, um, <coughs> communal uh, um, awareness uh, um, activity with uh, becoming more aware of their ecosystem to protect it, you know, to find stewards or champions or something like that. Yeah. Or conversation, yeah, this, this is a, a conversation uh, uh, um, a project can fall as well into this. So if you're trying to uh, maintain certain species, yeah. Uh, um, but again, uh, this is actually further defined so they argue as well in the paper, for example, uh, technology to moderate the temperature difference across the world, yeah, which is probably quite, uh, um, uh, it's, it's a big thing. Uh, I know actually technologies that can do that, but uh, I would not consider them uh, uh, really green by definition. Uh, um, yeah, there are creepy stories from 1912 from our first world war. Uh, when I say, oh, well, it's, it's past generations, uh, they were as well kind of, uh, um, yeah, strange technologies as well. Okay, so green by project impact. So what, what type could that be? So this is a car, if you can see this, uh, um, kind of parked and there's a line hanging out of the tank. <coughs> what, what is that? Electric car. Yeah, electric car. And well, what could be here the green by project impact? Trying to save um, the Earth's resources by not using petrol. Yeah. So, for the fuel replacement, yeah, with an electric grid, again, the intentionality is maybe uh, on the impact element yeah, that you have an alternative infrastructure that people have the choice of, of uh, um, 
moving there again. Yeah, really yeah it's a, it would <coughs> completely defeat a, a, a purpose. Yeah, if you have next to it kind of a oil refinery that kind of burns the uh, um, oil to to create electricity, or as well a big coal plant. Yeah, but then then you have of course kind of uh, um, undersold uh, uh, idea there. Yeah. This just means we, we are moving backwards in uh, um, engine design. Yeah, but uh, um, again, uh, research-wise, this is uh, interesting for university. So maybe other uh, um, uh, projects, green by impact. <coughs> Examples. Just like the where we place Yeah. What? No, you said it was like a replacement of energy. No, the green by impact. Yeah. Was it when you replaced something? So, yeah, here it was a, a, a building infrastructure for allowing alternative use. So, electricity is kind of the medium on mm -hmm. which the cars run. So, you can then feed it with anything, right? So, wind energy. Ideally, a uh, uh, more uh, um, sustainable strategy. But if you look at the design, actually, uh, um, coal plants uh, shouldn't really say that out too hard. But uh, they are very efficient in, in energy generation. Nowadays. And we have really optimized the turbines and the whole system design because it is highly effective, well, efficient and effective in terms of uh, um, engineering, whereas uh, wind farms we are still at the beginning with our technology. So there is a, a um, Risky argument somewhere in the middle, yeah. but yeah. So the idea is here: if you're hydropower, and then the question is: is it is it okay to big, build a big infrastructure like a, a water dam wall to kind of uh, um, yeah interfere with the natural ecosystem and, and have like a huge water buffer that actually allows turbines to run at efficiency values versus uh, um, just having the maybe. Yeah. But, uh, um, so there, there are ratios, and, and uh, um, this is a hot debate, but uh, then you are looking really at a very big problem. Yeah. But yeah, the uh, um, energy network is neutral as we want, yeah. so by impact, you are allowed to as well use other sources. Yeah. Are, there, are there maybe uh, green by project impacts? A nice one I've seen recently is um, beehives on. Um, Making honey on the top of um, skyscrapers. Yeah, New York is very famous yeah. for that. Yeah. yeah. So this is the idea of. Uh, oh, yeah. Did you know a little bit more about that? Oh, which hotel was it? Somewhere like Claridge's. Got. Uh, okay. and, yeah, and then they can make the yeah have the honey there, and then they'll put it on the tables and then turn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of the idea of local. Uh, um, I, think, I know actually for the wrong reasons for that. Uh, our culture lab uh, um, kind of analyzed, uh, um, so culture lab is just over the road. Uh, um, it's a Newcastle uh, um, a research institute and they look at media and design and uh, they, they had a hard problem. So in New York, the honey that uh, bees actually collected was from chewing gums and kind of rubbish bins because there are not so many uh, plants. So uh, what, what a lot of the beehives did there, they kind of would plant, put plants around the beehives, and then you would have kind of the, the bees as well, kind of strategic, you know, they don't want to fly far. But they really like chewing gums, because they're so sweet, it's pure sugar. And so what you arrived at was honey that was blue and lilac and kind of <laughs> colors that you would normally not associate with honey. So, uh, um, and they got the research basically to look at designs and functional ways of still using it, because it's uh, sugar syrup, so, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was a side story. This is how I heard about it. But the idea is uh, actually nice. The intent was to kind of uh, re, well, basically bringing nature back into the city. Yeah? New York had a, a, a city planning that has kind of removed all the trees and nature out of the city, and now they're trying to reduce it back in, uh, uh, reintroduce it back into the city. Yeah. This is potentially even green by definition, yeah, I, I would say. But green, green by project impact? Well, what do you think?
How, how can we, well, well what, what would you uh, see as a, a dream by uh, um, impact in your personal life? What, what would be maybe an outcome that would change your life in a more sustainable way? I mean, this is an American model, so hence it's green, yeah, not so sustainable. But uh, um, it's, it's still the same theorem if you want. So do you do you drive with your car to university, or do you walk, or do you cycle, or do you take public transport, or all all of the above? Yeah. Walk, drive. Yeah. So if if you're driving, then a, a green project personally, yeah, for you would be an alternative, yeah, any alternative to driving. Yeah. But again, yeah, this is, uh, and then if you're walking, yeah, this is already yeah, green. green Green by uh, uh, definition, really, yeah, but uh, uh, green as well by impact. Yeah. Okay. I, I hope that makes sense. So, green by imp uh, project impact is uh, um, the example that I've already bought you with uh, uh, the starch recovery plan from our effluent and the potato chips plan, or uh, um, the, the, uh, the drainage system that we built for a city in, uh, uh, Landa in South Africa, northern South Africa. Uh, um, uh, um, so they, they have a green impact because they actually allowed kind of water supply to maintain and didn't interfere with the local forest and natural environment. Yeah? So they, they have a good outcome, but of course putting a drainage into the ground is not uh, green. Yeah? This is actually you're altering uh, the environment. Right? Yeah. So the impact was green, but uh, um, just because we knew what, what was coming with a uh, um, Water filling plant. Yeah. yeah, this depends. Yeah, so if if this is your little sheep that has been naturally grazing in its natural habitat for years, and you are eating this now because it's time at the end of the year, and uh, alternatively you are burning down the forest and like putting carrots there to eat carrots. <coughs> Then you know the, there is an implication. So the, the process matters, but you're quite right. Yeah. So it, it could be because it's a lot more direct food. There, there's a strong argument. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Actually, there, there's a paper in the reading list mm -hmm. that makes exactly this case. Uh, uh, the case because if you're farming industrially, you have to first grow kind of vegetables that we could already eat to give it to the animals. So it's a lot more direct, and you kind of optimizing land use. Yeah? So it's a good example. Yeah? But again, it depends. Yeah? So. Uh, yeah. I don't believe that you would have thought of the uh, uh, burning down the yeah. forest, and, but uh, um, there's... Yeah, but I heard a lot about it uh, when you use the canal of water. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Yeah, uh, is this a TED talk? Uh, uh, this sounds very familiar. Yeah. So I have two... Okay. but I haven't seen it. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah, yeah, so uh, uh, literally if you're looking at this, it's a ratio of nine. So to eat uh, 100 gram of uh, um, uh, meat, you have nine times the water consumed uh, um, than uh, eating a vegetable. And uh, this can be even quite quite uh, um, enriching vegetables. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, then we have uh, green by product impact. And here I have, oh, this, this is a look at, uh, example. Does anybody recognize this? It's a police office, believe it or not. Locally no, here, no, and I've forgotten the name sadly. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no yeah, no, no Steinside. Yeah, Cobalt. Cobalt Park. Yeah, this is spot on, yeah. but I don't know the name of the building anymore. That escaped me. Yeah, sure. So basically, what they uh, created is a, a passive house. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a self-generating heat, and it's passive in its energy use. Doesn't really work. <coughs> uh, uh, the the colleagues don't like the so the there's something with the air condition. They don't like the air, so they open windows and then the <laughs> air con runs. Uh, um, yeah. But still, the idea was actually green in, uh, product impact, <coughs> so n neutral in an energy household. This is one way. Yeah. Then uh, green in general. Uh, um, so here we are looking at the project management and uh, product delivery. So what, what could that be, green in general? No, let's go first one back. So green by product impact, what do you think that is? Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's that she you, you're spot on there. Yeah? So you, you have actually explained the definition, yeah, uh, which is spot on. Uh, um, so it's a house that is neutral in energy use to comparison. So it's a benchmarking, right? So if you can show that you're performing better, yeah, that it's actually uh, less energy intensive and that the products are more kind of aligned to uh, um, better use or recyclable recyclability. That's the term. I'm not sure about that. But uh, um, then, then you are basically hitting this. Yeah. So you are quite right. okay. Product impact can be as well uh, um, other elements, but what could be other uh, impacts from a product? Or what do you think? Actually, I see it a lot. A lot of you have smart watches, so that count uh, um, steps, and if you combine that with an app, that kind of encourages you to walk instead of uh, using transport as uh, the same spin again, yeah? then this can be as well sustainable. Uh, what, what really surprised me, uh, um, according to Google, the Pokemon Go is uh, uh, one such device. The gamification of going for a walk. Yeah? Uh, does everybody know this? Yeah. So it's an app you can upload and... It's potentially not sustainable because when my son got it, he went, you know, he's always in his bedroom. When he first got it, he kept going out for walks, but uh, he got bored of it and uh, he's still in his bedroom. So it depends on how much... Okay, how, how far it's embraced, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the game layer wasn't good enough. Yeah, he no, got, it wasn't uh, good enough yeah. to keep him walking. Okay, okay. Yeah, but uh, it's, uh, it's a big phenomenon in many places over the world, yeah. Um, other maybe green bag product, something that you have come across? Uh, renewable coffee cups rather than disposable ones. Yeah. Do, do you mean like you get a normal one with porcelain or, or? Yeah, or like one that you, a refillable mm -hmm. coffee cup. Yes. They sell them. The yeah, true, actually, we, we have yeah. them, yeah. So that, that is one such element, yeah, so still the initial manufacturing is probably not so good, but uh, um, <laughs> So then in comparison against uh, consistent ways, if you keep uh, um, using it, then it's probably better. Again, you, you would have to look at the numbers here, yeah. But, uh, um, other ones? Green by product impact? A lot of engineering projects would fall into this, yeah. So the Airbus, uh, the new combination of uh, um, basically reducing the <coughs> wing length versus increasing the wing span is actually meaning that the new Airbus 380 is reducing uh, um, the usage of uh, um, yeah, basically foil and energy that it needs to actually fly the same speed. So uh, um, things like this would fall as well into this. Yeah? But this is very engineering focused. Then green in general, what, what is this? The rest. <laughs> yeah, green in general is uh, um, so not printing paper anymore, and uh, instead giving everybody an e-book. Yeah, I, I doubt that there's a positive correlation, but uh, um, yeah. So th there, there are a few uh, um, projects like that. Now this typology is quite interesting for us because it means as well that there's a different focus of sustainability, uh, of sustainability. And if you want to have an impact as a project manager, the role is increasing. So at the level of green in general, you are in the position where you have to ask for a lot of power in your role to actually make an impact. So it becomes more difficult for you. If you do green by definition, you, you don't, uh, it's fine. You are already in the right framework. There's very little uh, um, problem for you to ensure that it's sustainable, it, uh, sustainable right? So in, in this typology, the role of the project manager in ensuring that uh, sustainability is embedded throughout the project life cycle and beyond is critical. However, the degree to which the project manager must assert these principles differs depending on the type of project. So that's the recognition. If you have a project that is only green by impact, uh, uh, green in general, uh, then you can play around with some tools along the project, but uh, um, there's very little remit for you to change everything, uh, anything. Yeah. So as the project focus on sustainability becomes less defined, the project manager must assert a stronger and stronger role in order to have a 
positive e effect on sustainability of the project. So Mary McKinley even says that if you are arriving at a project where it's just green, yeah, so uh, where, where everybody uh, um, drives an uh, electric car but gets a new car and, and things like that, then uh, um, you, you're kind of uh, um, not playing the right game. And as a project manager, you should go to your client and start a conversation on that topic and like stress how important it is to actually be sustainable. Now, Mary Kinley is a very uh, uh, powerful woman. She's very convincing. So th this may or may not be a part of your role, but be aware that more and more the responsibility is put on the project manager. Yeah? So the consultation is a, a very powerful uh, model, and uh, you, you want to probably consider that as well as part of your career. Yeah? Quick, quick question, do, do you feel that uh, um, you, you would be able to influence this? Where, where do you see your projects? If you have worked on some, or, or if you want to work on some, where, where do you see your projects being? Is it a mix of all, or, or are there largely maybe green by product impact or green by project impact? Where, where do you see those? Or, or do, you, do you find it difficult? I, I remember we had the conversation, right? Uh, um, there were there's some greening going on, but it's very, very hard for the project manager to do every, anything, right? Because it's already kind of set from the client and it's really just a delivery job <coughs> and making sure that all the uh, stakeholders basically uh, perform, right? Or, or was it not you? <laughs> what was you there? Yeah, well, what? Yes. So, for example, if you were going to do a, I don't know, a six-month job in somewhere like BP, it would be maybe be more difficult. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, the project manager arguably has a similar role, right? So you you have kind of the uh, definition front end uh, um, role, and then maybe the delivery role, yeah. And you're right, depending on your job, uh, if you're just going six months for VP to deliver uh, um, a, a fountain or, or something, a borehole yeah, for a uh, um, certain site. If you were like two or three or four years, then you could have that bit more influence and maybe change processes, opinions, that kind of Okay, so you see it already as a, a long-term consultation shifting culture, yeah. So uh, and then seniority and of course knowing your your fellow staff, and you know maybe as well getting a feeling where everybody stands on this is quite quite a tricky one, right? Yeah, I think uh, what I found anyway is a lot of people in organisations are just dismissing these sort of sustainable issues, and you kind of uh, you kind of labelled a tree hugger. <laughs> Okay, so there, there's an opposite, yeah? yeah? So there's a fear from that change, yeah? And, and uh, in response, uh, people are skeptical and uh, overemphasis tree hugger, yeah? yeah. Apparently, uh, quite, quite, uh, uh, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, maybe worthwhile trying out. But it's uh, quite, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's good. Uh, it's a very good uh, kind of uh, mental thing, yeah? Apparently, makes you very calm, yeah? So did, have you experienced similar cultures? So if you raise sustainability, it, it's uh, kind of uh, um, confronted as you, you are being a tree hugger or something? But if you say something that is sustainable, but also just like the Yeah, so uh, th this is again a different culture, right? When you have like a solution, this is both profitable and more sustainable. Often people buy into it. Yeah, this is as well the reduction of printouts. Yeah, th this was a win-win situation in uh, um, the finance department for printing. Yeah, but uh, um, at the same time, uh, we, we didn't necessarily uh, um, maybe address it completely. So some people still like to have a hard copy. And I uh, suspect it's the same. So the, the culture is already focusing on solution, not so much on, on embracing a problem to come to a solution. This is a tricky one. Uh, other examples?
Yeah, be aware. So depending on what company you're going in, there, there are different cultures around. Yeah? So culture is a very strong driver for this. And respectively, you, you have uh, different levels on where, where you're entering into the debate. Okay, uh, um, I, I've gone again too far. Okay, uh, um, in summary, uh, uh, well, what was important uh, for me to, for you to uh, uh, remember really, is project management is important, sustainable development is important. We have now the first hybrids of uh, sustainable uh, project management. Now have a look at the paper. Uh, I've just shown you like two ways of categorizing. There are a lot more tools to this than uh, what, what I've illustrated. We go through it by the project life cycle in the next four sessions. Uh, um, yeah, the traditionally defined project management, and you notice this already by the approaches that we are covering in project program and portfolio management, are shifting. So we are already incorporating it. We, we do so already at leading companies that want to be kind of on the front end. And we see this already on the consultancy side where project managers see this as an opportunity to position themselves in the market. But this is not yet mainstream applied. Yeah, so this is still work in progress. So this is as well an area that, that is maybe an opportunity for you yeah, to specialize on. Um, so the traditionally defined project management is still uh, um, in conflict with sustainability, but at the same time we are reshaping this at the moment. Yeah. Uh, F as well, again, the usual reading list. And I don't have the paper. Okay, I, I upload as well the paper for the uh, Russian MIG. Yeah, um, you will see it's a design paper and uh, a supply chain and life cycle. Yeah, this is a beautiful paper. Okay, this is it uh, um, for today. I had a small exercise which I uh, um, encourage you to do uh, as a homework. It's in the e-learning material. Um, for next week, please uh, get started on your article, yeah, on your journal article. Identify literature, think about the structure, what you want to do. And next week, we don't have a formal session, I, I probably because it's in the timetable, I will probably rock up. So don't worry, if you're not coming and you don't scan in, this is not required next week. Yeah, I will just accept you all. Uh, um, you, you can either just email me or if you want to speak to me and want to have a look uh, with me over it, this is the time to do it. Yeah, Next week, same time, or, or book an appointment and I will be around the whole week. Yeah. And any questions? Does that go for the P3M as well? Yeah. It, it was not meant that way. Uh, uh, next week we have for the P3M uh, uh, workshops. Okay. So you should have, it was actually seven hours, but I, I got somewhere compromised. So I have only th two uh, three hour blocks. We are doing a uh, project program and, uh, no wait, other way around, project portfolios. We look at uh, project selection then build a portfolio, evaluate it against risk and opportunity, and uh, have a look as well in terms of returns, what that means for us, and how we are happy to let the portfolio level interfere with our projects. Yeah? So that class still goes ahead next week? Yeah, be careful. This is a different time, right? This is in my timetable quite late. I, I think we are on from something like five, no. Uh, no, 224 is a, a sustainability which will not run. Yeah, so, yeah, 5 to 8. I think that is our time slot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the only session that we have next week. Yeah, project program portfolio management. I, I tried to cancel again the sustainability session, but I, I don't know why it actually reappeared. Yeah. Any, any other questions? Uh,